uh, just ended up a nightmare for them. First load, let's go. Yield results are in. Another damp morning. Looks nice, but stops us getting combining early. You see the dampness on the wheels, it's just soaking. Stay there. Oh, they're needing filled. Flipping dog. Down when you're in mud like this, not up on the quad bike. Then I get a muddy backside. No, no, go on, down you go. When the weather's bad, there is quite a bit of shelter in amongst these trees and just the fact that this grass is on quite hilly ground, there's a lot of kind of wee valleys and troughs where they can hide out from the weather. The kids must be cycling to school. Or to the bus anyway. So that. Remove all that fog and you get an absolute corker of a view from here. War is an awful day, hey. Dad's rocked up with some cattle feed we got bruised two days ago. We were just running a little bit low. I'm just getting these beasts squared up with some grub. Works a treat this auger bucket. The only thing you really notice is when you put the other flat lift on it, which has a much bigger oil pump, the auger bucket just spits it out mega quick out with the other fort lift. From factory, this fort lift is 79 or 78 litres a minute, 80 litres a minute oil pump. It is 19 years old and it's done 8,000 hours, so I can't imagine it's still reaching 80 litres a minute. Well, let's call it 65. The fort lift at home is 110 litres a minute, which I imagine is still like 105 litres a minute which makes a lot of difference. Dad's been and Dad's gone. He's away for another load. There's one more load of feed to bring. He wants to clear the grain shed at the moment because we're going to be combining for the next, hopefully, week. And he needs all the space he can muster in that grain store. Make a bit of space for Dad's second load he's bringing because I can't move my Land Rover. I left ignition on and the battery's dead. Nice one. I love this bale spike. So handy. Morning. You are some lump, aren't you, Doug? You are some big lump. We're getting a final wee flourish of summer. <sighs> Bless. Hens are pretty much done. Dad's been working away with Dunk and getting the seed in. Laureate spring barley. All the spring barley we're growing this year is Laureate. The boys who are at the roof, they almost got finished, but the end piece wasn't delivered. So they've not got that apex bit done, which is a bit frustrating, but anyway. They were up here for two days sorting all that out. They got on okay. The last guys who tried to repair it, they pulled the barge boards up, shoved a load of mastic underneath, and it just meant when these guys came to do it, everything was so stuck together, and uh, it was just a pain for them, to be honest. See there, that's two sheets that have been bridged together and just loads of mastic. Uh, just ended up a nightmare for them getting it all stripped. They were saying on grain stores, you're meant to use tape and not mastic, probably for this exact reason. Already seeing the build up of little bits of greenery on there. The thing is with these bits of greenery, they start putting tiny wee roots down into the fiber cement. It's not good for it. What are you meant to do with your roof sheets when you end up with that growth? And that's, well, that's probably been up four years now. Three years, four years. Yeah. Anyway, fingers crossed that is the leaks sorted. There you go, they sent up a bridge rather than a corner apex piece. Kevin and I are off to shift some bales, but first we're gonna head out to this barley and we're gonna see how we're getting on because we're doing the yield trial for the Moravis Plus. Katie, who works for Syngenta, who got in touch and organized all this, she was out throughout the year. I didn't tell her what was what, but here's some pictures and she figured out what was what, what was Moravis treated, what wasn't. And you can see the Moravis treated is significantly cleaner looking than the untreated by Moravis. It's not untreated, we treated it in our normal program, which is all the rest of our spring barley treated that way. So that 65 pound has resulted in that, which 
we're going to find out later if that resulted in yield. This section is not included in our year tr yield trial because we had sunflowers in here last year. So we've not included this because it would really throw off the yields. From that wood line and where dad is down to the poles is untreated by Moravis and below the poles is treated by Moravis. Quite a bout of straw there. Well, there's quite a lot of straw. Field after sunflowers, let's go and see if there's noticeably less straw without there being sunflowers the year before. It was spuds down there the year before though. Wow, there definitely is a good bit less straw. The split between Moravis and non Moravis is between that tram line and this tram line, so that's it, spot on there. You won't be able to see anything by eye. That's Moravis, and that's not Moravis. Oh, flipping egg, it is roasting today. That, that is a good roasting today, I'm not complaining. Although I was absolutely sweating in the hen shed. It looks quite good. Yeah, 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 the hen drink was a bit up there. Filling the back of the trailer is always a tricky bit. And you're in the cab looking through the perspex, which is all dusty and scratched. Getting that back bit filled without spilling it over the back. Not the easiest. I'm getting covered in chaff here. Brilliant. Dad's missed the trailer a couple of times. Don't we all? Whatever results I give to you later, take them with a pinch of salt, good or bad. If Moravis produces great results, pinch of salt. If it produces really bad results, pinch of salt, because the soil type does change in this field. There is a few kind of lesser yielding spots. It was in spuds last year, so this is not a be all and end all, good or bad for the product, but it will be a rough indicator. Jumpy. Yeah, it is a bit jumpy, the gearbox in this. So. Kev, I think, did calibrate the clutch, but I don't know if it really helped. I think the gearbox needs calibrated. 12 to 13 has always been really bad, yeah. but the rest are all not great either. Right, I'm away shifting bales after I push this up. We'll get the yield results of that once Dad and Dunker finished it later tonight. A tune! You just have to watch out for that conveyor system up there. Yield results are in from that trial. Now, the Moravis treatment and our normal treatment, they yielded almost identically at a corrected nine tons per hectare. These two pictures here and here clearly show the Moravis is definitely doing a job at controlling disease. Pictures are taken on the same day, same field, two different treatments. So Moravis obviously is dealing with a disease and you would imagine that would result in yield. And I think it probably does. I think the, our yield results are showing almost identical results because the part that the Moravis treatment was on is a slightly different soil type and would yield marginally less. So I think Moravis has done a job. It is an expensive product and the maths worked out at 57 pounds a hectare increased cost doing the Moravis treatment versus our standard treatment which at 180 pounds a tonne, we needed 251 kilos increased yield. So from those results, we can't really take anything substantially conclusive. I think it definitely does a job, whether it's a 250 kilo plus job, that is tricky to see. I'll be very interested to see how the likes of Scottish agronomy and other growers have got on with Moravis in spring barley particularly. I think you're also going to see diminishing returns at nine tons a hectare for spring barley. It's pretty good yields. If it was a seven, seven and a half ton crop, there'd maybe be slightly more discrepancy in those yields. Moving a crop from seven ton to eight ton is significantly easier than trying to get a crop to go from nine ton to 10 ton, if you know what I mean. Once I find out some results from other growers and Scottish agronomy results on their trials, I'll give you a wee update on what I think about the Moravis product and whether we're going to go ahead with it next year. And a big thank you to Syngenta and Katie from Syngenta who sent out the product for us to do a trial with. Let's go shift some bales. What's going on here? Petty. Petty? Who's that? 
It's Betty. Right, I need to go and do some farming. Bye. I've got my Peely Wally legs out. Peely Wally, pasty, white, nay sunshine has hit them. That is a field of oats. I can see there's a lot of barley growing. It's starting to just show a wee bit of a yellow tinge. I sprayed it the other day, so starting to kill it off now. There's just over 190 bales in this field to shift. We're going to start at this end because we're going to start ploughing from this end. We might not get all these bales shifted tonight, but hopefully Kev's going to go ploughing first thing in the morning. So if we'll get from this side cleared, we can finish the rest of the morning as long as there's some ground cleared for Kev to get going. Screen door cracked, ball game on. <laughs> First load, let's go. Ten round leads. Healthy load. Gentle place between a collarbone and a stone cold face. Does it get better than this? Does it? Does it? Tell me. How do you improve this? Other than adding a can of Bandit Stout or Bandit Lager right in my hand there. The stout you can get in the link below, right down there. Go and fetch yourself some. Anyone who has bought the stout so far, thank you very much. It's had really good feedback so far. I was a bit kind of nervous because a lot less people drink a stout than drink a lager. So I didn't make as much, but I still made quite a substantial amount. And it's been going really well so far. I think there's maybe, maybe a hundred cases left. I'm really happy with that. There won't be a stout again for a while, maybe 2025, but there definitely won't be any more this year. It is scorching. It must be at least 18 degrees. Fill her up. Just fill her up. Sweet as a nut. There's seven loads to come. Boys all say goodbye to the women that they swear are gonna be their wives. Risky business wearing a dress. Get my grubby paws all over it. Old friend of mine. Serious trouble. Oh, yeah, beauty! I can get used to this absolute tune as well. Don't you want me?